Hey, I'm Lydia Lee from Screw the Cubicle, and my job is to help you reinvent your work outside of the nine to five to create a meaningful business that's designed from your purpose, your genius zone, and the impact you want to make. So if you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the notification bell button to be the first to know whenever I drop a video here every single month. So a lot of you have been asking me about non-social media ways to market and grow your business. And a few months ago, I filmed a video called do you need social media to start a business uh, and if you haven't watched that already you can go up there to the cards above at the moment and bookmark that video to watch after this one in order to get uh, three tips that I use in my business that are non social media related to be able to grow my business but today I'm gonna be sharing one of my most favorite ways uh, to build and grow an audience without social media and that is using newsletters now in this video, I'm going to really break down for you why newsletters are an incredible way to build trust and credibility uh, with a new audience and how it actually attracts customers to buy from you. And then I'm going to help break down how to create an engaging newsletter that people actually want to read and come back for and use it as a way to plant educational seeds to get your audience ready to be working with someone like you. And then I'm going to be sharing how to get started uh, with a simple newsletter. And I'm going to share a tool that I use to get started as well um, and how you can, too, create a consistent newsletter practice. All right, let's jump in. Now, you might not be someone that wants to rely on social media solely to be the only place to attract an audience. And maybe you're not having that much fun or find that social media is a bit distracting from the work you actually really want to do for your business. Um, and I don't blame you, you know, with the ever constant changing algorithm of what gets shown and, you know, you don't have control over really who sees your content uh, and you're sort of, you know, giving up that control over that how that platform wants to show your brand unless you buy things like ads and so forth. And so social media to me, how I've sort of been using it is I, I have used it kind of more like a secondary sprinkle, <laughs> if that is a theme, um, secondary sprinkles to your messaging and to your, your brand awareness. But I find that newsletters and email has been a much more effective way to build trust and credibility for my work and really start to really engage in a much more deeper way than social media has ever done for me. And the stats actually really support that as well. Um, I think they, I believe that the last time I read an article about this, uh, about 60% more of people actually read your emails and absorb the information in the emails versus a passive scroll on your post. And maybe even you, if you got a like, you have no idea if you actually, you know, if they actually read that post. And so I also look at marketing as a, a relationship growing practice. So if you want to treat your customers like humans um, and, you know, client relationships are a lot like the dating process. It doesn't just take one snazzy post to get people to trust you. It, you know, trust and credibility uh, are, are gained over time. And when people opt in for your newsletter or for uh, be, to be a part of your email list, they're really warmed up people. You know, they've given you permission to give them more information. And when you do that more consistently on a weekly or a monthly level, it really helps people to start building that trust with you over time. And the more likely they are to be ready and to pick you as someone that they really, really want to work with. All right, planning out how you're going to actually engage in your newsletter is going to be really important from the get-go so that you have a bit of structure and a theme to the newsletters that you're producing and a great place to get started today. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through what makes an engaging newsletter and what you want to start thinking about in terms of the kinds of newsletters that you want to send out and also give you a bit of an example uh, of one of mine so that that can spark some inspiration for you as well. Uh, so the first step to get started is to figure out what kind of newsletter you actually Actually want to send okay there's no no right or wrong way to do this but you know a couple ideas that of what I can plant the seed for you today is that you might want to start off with something that's bi-weekly or a monthly newsletter to start so that you'll actually be consistent in doing it and maybe increase that frequency as you go um, now 
these newsletters could look different. Um, for example, for me, I have a newsletter that goes out every week uh, that gives people the heads up about a new video, just like this one, right? Or an interview that I might have recorded uh, that is gonna allow people to watch that newest episode. And that is sort of uh, something my audience expects because I do video and interviews very often every single month. Um, and I have that happening every month, uh, every week, sorry. And then I have a sort of recap newsletter, which I really love doing, which is all the things that, um, um, they might have missed for the month, but also I do something called a theme of the month. What was my biggest learning? What's the biggest learning from my clients? What's a theme that's relevant to perhaps what's going on in the world at the moment or to your clients uh, that helps me to create a newsletter from resources, um, my own content, uh, and a little snippet of a, of a learning, right, that I want to give to my audience. And it's a really nice newsletter that people like to receive uh, called the Recap uh, uh, newsletter, right, that sends off at the end of every month uh, that, that allows people to really see what I'm working on and, and how they can progress forward with their goals. And so picking the style of newsletters, you know, would be a really good place to start. Find out if you want to do it weekly, uh, if you want to end do a weekly recap rather than a monthly recap, or again, depending on your own marketing activities that you want to showcase, like a podcast or a video, right? Those could be sort of your beacons for what your newsletter could be on a weekly level that you might want to be sharing, okay? The second thing is to set expectations for yourself and your clients. You want them to know when they subscribe to your newsletter, what are the kind of topics that they're expecting? And what do you really want to write about? And most importantly, what do you want to be known for talking about, right? It can be very tempting to want to be random <laughs> at times and talk all about your life and you know talk all about the topics that you're passionate about but we want to remember that people are opting in from your for your newsletter for a specific problem that they want to solve so you want to really create the container for what i call theme pillars that you want to stick with so that people know that these are the types of content that they, they expect right and so uh one of the things that you might want to get started with is thinking about these content and theme pillars that are almost the foundation of what your emails and your newsletters will be about, right? Um, and if you're kind of fuzzy about what those content themes are and what content is relevant to the thing you want to be known for, um, I have another video up here that you can click uh, and watch after this one uh, called How to Create a Content That Matters for Your Audience. Um, and that's going to support you in actually creating some of those content themes. And picking three is a good one uh, to just, you know, you don't have to be perfect, just, know, you know, right now what right for right now for your business and what what are the sort of main core problems main core topics that your audience will come for and stick with that theme so that people really see a pattern right really see what you're known for before you start to add more themes into your newsletter um, and that's going to make sure that you stick with that focus every time you write your newsletter and then how you sort of balance that out with promotion and education uh, is going to be, you know, needs to land just right as well. And I like to use the 80-20 rule of creating content for educational content and promotional content. You do need to promote your business and you do need to tell people how to buy things from you, right? But you don't want that to be 100% of your intention, right? 80% should be about educational content, content that really helps people to do something different, take the next step, plant a seed, right? change a mindset, whatever your helping way is, right? And then save the 20% uh, for promotion. Right. So you can always out of, let's say, you know, three emails you do, one of the emails is a direct promotion to your product or your service. And that way, you know, people it actually works well for people to sell to people anyway, because they start to use the educational content as the building blocks to feel ready to work with you. So all of that is still a sales activity, right? But it's done in a in an authentic way. It's done in a helpful way and non-sleazy way. So that when you do promote a product and a service, um, they they understand why, right? And they've already been prompted of um, the reason why they should be working with you. So plant seeds, right? The newsletter is to plant seeds, to educate, to help genuinely rather than to sell. So in terms of an uh, creating engagement for your audience, right? This is sort of where you can get creative, where you can find where your voice really lands for you and your most natural way to really deliver um, 
great value content, but also do it in an engaging way. So some of the ways that I've done it is telling a story, right? You don't have to do a how to bullet point step by step and make it boring. You can always start with a personal story or a story from your clients that you can start to really paint the picture about why this piece of content for this newsletter really matters to the end goal for your clients, right? And when you tell that story in a human way, people tend to listen a lot longer, okay? It doesn't get so academic and theoretical, right? They can really feel what, why they need to learn this. And then you can tell them the how, right? Start with why, then go into how you do that thing, and then what are the next steps that you might be taking to do it? So tell a story, sharing client wins are awesome way to tell a concept by using a real case study, whether it's yourself or from a client. Um, and then don't forget to share your process. So if you had a great aha moment in your business, or you had a great aha moment in your mindset shift this week, uh, or you talked to a client after a coaching call and went, oh, I really want to tell the rest of my audience about this thing we accomplished today. Um, share the progress of how you help your clients and sharing your progress is a way of planting sees and educating your clients on a better way to do something and that your way could be the way that's right for them and then it'll be a no-brainer for people to want to work with you even sharing behind the scenes of how you make decisions that really humanizes yourself as a business owner and gives some transparency about the problems that you too have as a human and how you're not perfect and you can really showcase what you did to make it better for yourself and Always don't forget to have a call to action at the end of every newsletter and email. And the call to action is not always to buy something, right? The call to action is do something about the information that you just received from me and engage in a conversation. Ask your audience to reply to the email about the biggest learning they learned from that email, right? Or what is one thing they're going to take action on after they read this newsletter? Or what's another question that you would love to get, uh, they would love to get answered by you and that you would reply personally, right? Don't make newsletters a dormant marketing activity, make it engaging. The whole point of engagement is to create conversation, right? So always end a newsletter with a next call to action to give you a little something, something, right? Couple more insights so that maybe you film another video for them based on that feedback or you can ask for um, any questions that they might have, anything you can support them with, which is a really, really great way of using newsletters authentically. Um, so here is a little screen recording or screenshot of my newsletter, the one that I give away uh, at the end of every month, which has a monthly theme. And you can see it sort of starts with, you know, a little bit of a, a planting seed of a theme learning for the month. It shares about my offers as well. Uh, and it also gives them some valuable content and resources that are uh, beyond my own content that actually pertains to that month uh, and gives people more information and more knowledge uh, that they're armed with to get going on some of the goals that they have. And it's a great way uh, that I end the newsletter as well, you know, to get their feedback, ask them to reply to me. And this is uh, one of my, some of my biggest, um, you know, open rates for emails, uh, because this particular news, this style of newsletter is really, really valuable for people to get. Uh, it's long form, it's deep, uh, it's personal, um, and I really, really enjoy making it once a month. So Hopefully that inspires you to do yours as well. Um, all right, so what can we expect in terms of um, keeping it simple to get started on newsletter uh, newsletters, right? So the first thing is decide on the frequency. How much will you commit <laughs> to actually starting your newsletter? So as I mentioned before, you know, bi-weekly or monthly is sort of the minimum of what I would recommend. If you can do a weekly email, I think that's an excellent practice. And don't be afraid that people don't want to hear from you. The right people who are actively seeking for your help would want to hear from you. And if, if it is valuable content, if you're following the 80-20 rule of giving 80% of educational and valuable content, then you don't have to feel shameful about sharing your expertise because it's very helpful to others, right? So bi-weekly, if you can, do it weekly if you also can, right? But start getting into the practice and sticking to that schedule for at least the first three months before you sort of add more emails, okay? Just so that you can build habits for a healthy practice in writing these newsletters. And then decide from, you know, do you wanna do, um, you know, a full recap kind of newsletter? Do you, do you have a piece of beacon content from your marketing activity like videos or podcast interviews that you want to be, um, you know, 
know, sharing every week and know what your newsletters are going to be about. Is it one focus for a particular piece of content or is it like a recap newsletter, right? Like the one I shown you for my example that you want to be committing to. And a couple tools that um, I use to do email. Okay, so one of them is ConvertKit. ConvertKit is an email system. I, I'm going to put under the description of this video, um, you know, how to get to um, a free account with ConvertKit to get started. Um, it is something that I've used for many, many years. It's one of the simplest email marketing systems, and I've tried them all. Uh, and it's a very affordable price as well. And it's one that I recommend to my clients. So if you click on that, it is an, it is an affiliate link, uh, but it's, I only affiliate myself with products that. I've trusted and have built uh, my business around. So check that out if you want to take a look. Um, but ConvertKit is an excellent way to do very simple black and white emails. Um, you can put imagery on it, but I find that actually people read a lot more emails that just look like a regular email. I know we want to get fancy with banners and, you know, things like that. And you can certainly try and see if that works for your clientele. But I find that my people really love black and white emails. It just looks like a real email. Now, for certain newsletters, like my recap email, I put some nice imagery on it to tell them about my week or my month. But that's pretty much it. And I might, I might use some coloring and some emojis here and there, but it's really pretty plain. And I find that people really like reading those, right? So convert is a great way for you to use a system to broadcast emails and and keep it simple and build your audience that you own that is not on a social media platform. The second tool I use that's more of a creative tool, right, to make newsletters fun again for me. Sometimes if you're not a writer, you might be a video person. So I use a tool called Loom and Loom's another link I'm going to put under the descriptions uh, where you can use to record videos uh, that you is very simple to make. You can see it, people can react to your video, leave you a comment on the video, um, and it is free to use at the moment. And so you can actually, um, you know, embed a little screenshot of your video and your newsletter talk out your newsletter, right? Talk out the content instead of writing it out. And that could be a really great way as well for you to showcase your personality and make talking to your audience kind of a fun thing rather than um, just writing an email. So if you are uh, less of a writer and more of a talker, that could be a creative tool for you to use that I also use to create really engaging emails for my audience. All right, so now that you know some simple techniques and what to do, what to create engaging newsletters and why you might want to do it, I want you to really think about uh, creating this habit to stay consistent. Like really think about the days that you want to send this newsletter. Doesn't matter how small your list is. Go for it and create that practice as you build your audience and really see what it is that you want to include in your newsletter um, when you first get started. So I want to learn from you in the comments. Uh, drop me a comment as well. What are some ideas from this video that sparked for you that you want to get started on in building your own newsletter? Are you excited to have your own newsletter? And what frequency would you want to commit to in order to create a healthy habit of communicating and engaging with your audience? Let me know below. Thank you so much for joining me today. And um, I always love hearing from you. So let me know if there's any other uh, topics or questions that I can film a video for you in the next batch of videos. And I would love to answer your question. Thank you so much for joining me and see you in the next one.